You know, there were ups and downs. After five years, I was a broken man. It was dark, and there was nowhere to turn. And it was like that for a total of almost seven years in my life. Ups and downs. Beloved, you know, urged with chronic matters that you don't even dare to share with anyone because it's just too hard. It's too painful. You've shared them in the past and people have shut you down or treated it superficially and you say, you know, why, why, do, I even, why do I even put my broken heart out on the table for people to finger it? Things that helped me will help you. Absolutely, without question, if you are here as a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, the things that I have to share with you from God's Word this weekend will resonate with your heart. It will echo in your mind. And you'll say, this is what I've been waiting for. You already know that you're supposed to trust God. Here's the problem. Here's the question. Here's what you need. You need to know how to trust God. That's a different question. Should I trust God? Yes. We're all on the same page. When someone is at ease and they come to and they find a man who is broken and discouraged like Job was, scraping the boils with broken pottery, having just buried his ten children and having lost his immense fortune, and the three counselors come and start to, to tell him he must be hiding sin in his life. Job responded to that and said, People like you who are at ease, you find it easy to hold people like me in contempt. Because, because you're not going through the suffering, you find it easy to criticize those who are. And I certainly found that to be true in my own experience. Well, ask God when you evaluate your problems in light of His ways that He has revealed in His Word. And then you rest your confidence that He will ultimately deal with you consistently with those ways. Beloved, if you are a Christian, it is absolutely certain, it cannot be violated, that God will ultimately work in your life in a manner that is consistent with His own holy character. God does not violate His own character, ever. And your worst problems will never contradict that fact. Ever, ever, ever. And here's the problem when you're in the shoes that I was in, when you're in the shoes that some of you are in this evening, is that you're in a position where every Everything that you can possibly see, everything that, is, that defines your existence, screams at you that this is the exception. That this is the time where God let it down, God let it go, and God dealt with you in a way that is different than what He's revealed in His Word. And at that point, when that becomes clear to you in your mind, you have to kind of make a decision about what you're going to believe. Are you going to believe and trust in God's Word and what it says about God's character, or are you going to trust your feelings and your own perspective? This is where the ground is won on trusting God. lack of alternative forced me and forces you into a position where you have to come to grips with eternal principles because there's no earthly answer to what you're facing. As it turned out, the utter finality of it and the severity of it was actually a blessing that forced me into answers that would actually satisfy 
As long as you think there's an earthly answer, you're not completely dependent upon what God has to say about these things in His Word. So, there is a man in Scripture who can show you how to move from your tears to triumph, from fear to faith. From being a victim to being a victor, if you want to put it that way. And I'm speaking of a prophet named Habakkuk. Your circumstances do not have to change at all in order for you to know a fullness of joy even in the midst of what you're going through. Your circumstances don't need to change. The people that burden you don't need to change in order for you to experience a fullness of joy and trust and calm in the presence of God. And that can become the operative, defining, controlling principle of your entire existence. Period. End of story. That's the way it is. It's really important to recognize that. Because as long as you're trying to, waiting for the circumstances to change, you're, starting, you're stopping short of the fullness of what it means to trust God. God should do. That is God's prerogative. Why is it God's prerogative? Because He is God. He rules. This is His universe. This is His purpose. And He gets to do what He wants to do because He's God. Now, (laughs) you know, there may be times where we, that's hard for us to accept. But beloved, what does it mean for you to call Jesus Lord? Except that you submit to Him. You receive Him as your divine teacher. And you receive Him as the Lord who has absolute prerogative to do exactly what He wants in your life, even if it hurts. And so look, for some of you, I understand that life is not working out the way that you want. And it hurts. It's painful. And it's a grind just to get through the day. I understand that. I have lived through that. Grind wanting to go to just wanting sleep to come so that you can forget about it and then when you sleep you've got nightmares and you wake up and you start the whole cycle over again I get that I really do and it is a condescension of God that when we're like that we can go to him honestly in prayer what does God say to Habakkuk in chapter 1 verse 5 he says look among the nations observe be astonished wonder Because I am doing something in your days you would not believe if you were told. For behold, I am raising up the Chaldeans, that fierce and impetuous people who march throughout the earth to seize dwelling places which are not theirs. What's he saying? Well, notice this. God responds to Habakkuk. But you know what? He doesn't answer Habakkuk's question. Habakkuk said, God, why? God doesn't give him why. He simply tells him, Habakkuk, I'm doing something. And what he does here in this section, chapter 1, verses 5 through 11, he tells Habakkuk to look out on the world scene. And what Habakkuk would see when he looked was that there was a rising nation coming out of Babylon led by the Chaldean people who were on the march. They were gathering strength and there there was a momentum to the expansion of their empire. What God is saying to Habakkuk in this passage is, is that that rising power, if you look out on the world scene, you'll see on the horizon, as it were, a nation rising in strength. And he says, Habakkuk, that nation has a purpose in my plan. There is something that you need to know. Habakkuk, you think I'm not doing anything? Quite to the contrary. 
I am in the process of changing the course of world history to address the very problem that you are praying about. You may not understand what you're going through. You could live worried, discouraged. Try a new approach. God, I don't understand it, but I trust you. I know you're in control. You're working all things for my good. So I'm not going to live upset. I'm going to stay in peace knowing that you will get me to where I'm supposed to be. In John 13, Jesus was about to be crucified. He and his disciples were eating dinner together at what we now know as the Last Supper. These disciples had spent the last few years with Jesus, seeing incredible miracles. Him heal the sick, raise Lazarus from the dead, feed thousands with a little boy's lunch. They were with Jesus when he made his triumphant entry into Jerusalem with people lining the streets shouting Hosanna. It was an experience greater than they ever imagined. But that evening, as they gathered for dinner, the mood quickly changed. Jesus told them how his hour had come, how he was going to be betrayed and crucified. Instead of people celebrating, they would mock him. After dinner, Jesus took a bowl of water and a towel and he washed the disciples' feet. He said in verse 7, You don't realize now what I'm doing, but one day you will understand. Jesus was telling the disciples, in effect, you're going to walk through some things in the days to come that you don't understand. Up to this point, there's been people cheering me on, but now I'm about to be betrayed. There's going to be opposition, persecution. I said I would never leave you, but I'm about to be taken away. He knew they were going to feel lonely, confused, afraid. So he told them right up front, you're not going to understand it now, but one day you will. Like these disciples, there will be times in life that you don't understand what God is doing. Things don't make sense. Trouble, delays, closed doors, people that betrayed you, prayers that haven't been answered. It doesn't make sense now, but don't worry. One day you're going to understand. God is going to connect all the dots. He doesn't allow things that he doesn't have a purpose for. That trouble is not a surprise to God. The sickness didn't catch him off guard. The child getting off course is not going to stop his destiny. God is still on the throne. He's still ordering your steps. You can't see it right now, but behind the scenes, God is lining up things in your favor. When it's the right time, when it all comes together, it's going to work for your good. You're going to see the hand of God. You'll look back and say, if that hadn't have happened, I wouldn't have this position. If that door hadn't have closed, I wouldn't have met this person. If I hadn't have gone through that difficulty, I wouldn't have stepped in to this new level. Now, don't waste your time trying to figure everything out. There are some things you're not supposed to understand right now. We can't see the plan of God. We can't fathom how he does things. We think natural, he's supernatural. If you're always trying to figure it out, it's going to frustrate you. Instead of using that energy trying to understand what's happening, use it to thank God that he's working. Thank him that he's fighting your battles. Thank him that he's making your crooked places straight. Thank him that you're surrounded with his favor. The scripture says, God will work out his plan for your life. You don't have to work it out. You don't have to live frustrated over what's not happening, discouraged over disappointments. You're not doing life by yourself. The creator of the universe is breathing in your direction. You keep honoring him and he'll open the right doors. He'll bring the right people. He'll turn negative situations around. He'll make things happen that you couldn't make happen. His plan for your life is much bigger than your own. If you're going to stay in faith, you have to learn to trust when you don't understand. I'm asking you to trust when you don't understand. God can see the big picture for our lives. All we can see is a little down the road. God knows where the dead ends are. He knows where the shortcuts are. He's ordering your steps. I used to just thank him for the open doors, but now I thank him just as much for the closed doors. Because if it's not supposed to be mine, I don't want it. If God is closing a door, don't fight it. 
If you tried your best and it didn't work out, yes, be persistent. But at some point, you have to accept it as God's plan and move on. That's a sign that God has something better, something more fulfilling, more rewarding. Does it mean that it's never going to happen? It may just mean that it's not the right time. Trust Him when it doesn't make sense. I know this is not easy. We don't like closed doors, unfair situations, being uncomfortable. But God uses these things to move us into our purpose. It's not just the good breaks that will take you into your destiny. The closed doors are as important as the open doors. The betrayals are just as important as the divine connections. God uses them all. When you understand this, you won't live upset when your plans don't work out. You won't go around sour because somebody did you wrong. You'll stay in peace knowing that God wouldn't have allowed it if he wasn't going to use it for your good. It may not feel good, but this is where you have to show God what you're made of. Anyone can be happy when things are going their way. Anyone can thank God when doors are opening. But if you want to pass this test and see God's favor in new ways, you have to thank Him when it doesn't work out. You have to have a smile when you could be complaining. Be good to others when someone is not being good to you. This is what faith is all about. If you're not willing to be uncomfortable and keep a good attitude when things don't work out, it will keep you from rising higher. 20 years earlier, I was discouraged by it. It was a bad break. It wasn't my fault. I didn't realize God was ordering my steps. That was a critical piece for me to fulfill my destiny. I thought back then it would only be the good breaks, open doors, things falling into place. I didn't know God would use disappointments, bad breaks, things that weren't fair. Like Jesus told the disciples, you're not going to understand what I'm doing now, but one day you will understand. What you're discouraged over now is really a blessing. You can't see what God is up to, but later on you're going to understand. God knows what you're going to need 20 years from now. A disappointment today a setback, a betrayal, you may not see how that works out for your good until years down the road. You may have some pieces in your life that don't make sense. Why did I not get that promotion I worked so hard for? Why did I have that tax issue? Was it my fault? Why did that person walk out of a relationship? By itself, that piece doesn't fit. Right now, it's not going to make sense. You have to wait for the other pieces to come together. The scripture says all things work together for good. God is in the process of connecting the dots in your life. Be patient and let him work out his plan. Trust him when the peace doesn't make sense. I can assure you your manufacturer didn't make a mistake. When God designed the plan for your life, when he made your puzzle, so to speak, he didn't accidentally put in a wrong piece something that didn't fit. He didn't leave something out. You have been fearfully and wonderfully made. Everything is serving his plan. But here's a key. He never said, you're going to understand everything. I'm going to show you what I'm doing. It's all going to make sense. He said, my ways are not your ways. He said, walk by faith and not by sight. You have to trust him when you don't understand. Stay in faith when it doesn't make sense. God is working behind the scenes in your life right now. You're on the verge of seeing him connect some dots. This is not the time to be discouraged. This is the time to stir your faith up. If you'll do this, I believe and declare you're about to step into a new level of favor. Breakthroughs, healing, divine connections, things you haven't understood in the past, you're about to understand. God is about to bring it together. You're going to see what he was up to in Jesus' name. If you receive it, can you say amen?